In the run-up to the release of the 9070 XT, the rumour mill was awash with speculation about both the raster and ray tracing performance of the 9070 XT. According to many of these rumours, it was going to provide near 4080 raster performance and about 4070 Ti ray tracing performance. But what would it mean to have 4070 Ti ray tracing performance on a card that has closer to 4080 rasterization performance? In this video I'm going to put that to the test in 12 games featuring a variety of RT workloads from the subtle lighting of Resident Evil 4 to the hard hitting path traced lighting of Alan Wake 2. We'll take a look at side by side comparisons of rasterized and ray traced lighting on both the 9070 XT and 4070 Ti in four of the games. Then we'll speed through the individual charts for all 12 games before providing summary charts for raster and ray traced performance on both cards. I'll even speculate how a hypothetical Nvidia card with identical raster performance to the 9070 XT would perform in a typical ray trace game versus the 9070 XT. Okay, let's get into the side by side comparisons. I decided to start with a Plague Tale Requiem because it only provides a single ray tracing option for shadows. In this scene we see the aliased low res rasterized cascading shadow maps on the left, while on the right ray tracing provides us with crisp shadows for near objects like Amicia, and we see more diffuse shadows associated with more distant objects with the leaves and branches of a tree having what is known as a penumbra on the outer parts of the shadow. The less distracting ray traced shadows come at a steep performance cost on the 9070 XT however. On the 4070 Ti, ray traced shadows are costly also, though not quite as much as for the 9070 XT. We'll get to the percentages a little bit later with the charts. Moving on now to a ray tracing favourite, Cyberpunk 2077. When we apply the RT Ultra preset, we see a variety of ray traced lighting effects at play, with reflections being the most obvious, though the game also features ray traced shadows, RT ambient occlusion, and RT global illumination, with some light upscaling an RT Ultra 1440p experience is achievable, though it comes at the expense of very high refresh rates without RT. With the 4070 Ti, we see that the 9070 XT outperforms the 4070 Ti, though the drop off in performance on the Nvidia card isn't as precipitous, and the 4070 Ti also has a ray reconstruction option that would make the reflections appear even more high resolution. Next up we have Silent Hill 2 and I have picked what I think is a gorgeous scene here to highlight the game's atmospherics using global illumination. At first glance you might struggle to tell the difference between rasterized GI and RT GI. If you look closely though you'll see more darker areas such as on the bricks to the left of James. Most areas of the game see a much smaller drop off in performance with ray tracing but areas like this would make you question whether the RT performance penalty is worth it. The 4070 Ti sees a much less significant hit to performance in this scene. Most areas of the game are not as intensive as this though and the 9070 XT doesn't suffer as much as it does here. The final side by side comparison comes in Black Myth Wukong. The 9070 XT performs very well at 4K resolution when employing rasterized lighting but takes a massive hit to performance when engaging the medium ray tracing preset which uses path traced lighting. This scene is transformed by path traced lighting, particularly in terms of shadows and ambient occlusion which add depth and realism. The 4070 Ti sees about a halving of performance in this scene compared to the 9070 XT which sees performance reduced by more than 70%. Ok, time to move on to the individual charts, but before I do, a quick word about the test system specs. The CPU used was an Intel i7-13700K and this was paired with DDR4-3600 memory. The 9070 XT model is the Gigabyte Aorus Elite, which is factory overclocked by 130 MHz. The 4070 Ti model is the Zotac Trinity OC, which has a more modest 15 MHz factory overclock. 
In a Plague Tale Requiem, at 1440p, the 9070XT sees performance drop by 38% when using RT shadows, and the 1% lows are even worse. The 4070Ti, by comparison, sees a 27% drop. At 4K, the result is pretty similar, with the 9070XT outperforming the 4070Ti handily in pure rasterization, but only edging it when employing RT, with the 4070Ti providing the smoother RT experience. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 9070 XT significantly outperforms the 4070 Ti when using pure rasterized lighting. And despite the 58% drop to performance when using the RT Ultra preset compared to the 4070 Ti's 49% drop to performance at both 1440p and 4K, the 9070 XT stays ahead by a few FPS. In Silent Hill 2, using a more typical benchmarking route than the scene I highlighted, the 9070 XT edges it slightly with and without RT. But as we saw from the highlighted scene, there are areas of the game where the 9070 XT struggles more. In Black Myth Wukong, using the RT medium preset, which uses path traced lighting, the 9070 XT sees hits to average FPS and 1% lows of between two thirds and three quarters while the 4070 Ti sees about a 40-50% to 50% hit. Control is a ray tracing classic at this point. It employs many ray tracing techniques, and when they are all switched on, the 9070 XT sees overall average FPS take a similar dip to the 4070 Ti, but sees smoothness tank with very poor 1% lows. The 4070 Ti, however, maintains its 1% lows in proportion to the overall average FPS. Doom Eternal hits a CPU bottleneck at 1440p, so we are only looking at 4K results here. This game, which only uses ray tracing for reflections, sees the 9070XT maintain a similar relative lead when turning on RT reflections. Hogwarts Legacy sees a much more significant hit to performance for the 9070XT when turning on ultra ray tracing, such that a healthy lead with rasterized lighting turns into a deficit. For Alan Wake 2, three sets of results are shown. The middle bar represents the RT low setting, which only uses RT for shadows and reflections. The third bar represents RT medium, which adds full path traced lighting. With RT low, we see the 9070XT holding its own against the 4070Ti, but when RT medium is employed, the 9070XT, despite edging out the 4070Ti in overall average FPS, struggles with 1% lows, resulting in a very stuttery experience. Resident Evil 4 is another game that hit a CPU bottleneck at 1440p. At 4K we see the 9070XT and 4070Ti are virtually tied, with the very subtle ray tracing effects barely moving the needle. Spider-Man Remastered at 4K is surprisingly heavy in terms of ray tracing performance when maxed out. Both GPUs see significant reductions in performance, with the 9070XT seeing an extra 10% of FPS lost. The Witcher 3 is typical of many other results we've seen, with the 9070XT having a significant lead when using purely rasterized lighting effects, and seeing the lead drop to a small one when using ray traced lighting. Our final game is Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. This one differs from the other games in that it does not have a pure rasterized lighting option. At minimum, it features a lighter RT lighting option, called RT Normal, and hybrid reflections that likely use a mix of screen space and RT. When switching to maxed out RT, the 9070 XT doesn't seem to lose much, if any, performance compared to the 4070 Ti. Let's move on to the overall averages now. I've tried to include a representative range of games featuring ray tracing that is fair to both GPUs and their architectures. When we include all results, the 4070 Ti on average saw a 37.6% hit to performance compared to the 9070 XT's 46%. If we exclude the path traced lighting results, we see the gap narrow slightly, and now the hits are about 36 and 42% respectively. To put those results in context, the 9070 XT, bearing in mind the model I have is uh, has a significant factory overclock, beat the 4070 Ti by 25% across the 12 games, factoring in both 1440p and 4K. 
When we exclude path tracing, which many see as more of an NVIDIA-sponsored feature, we see that the 9070 XT leads by 11.5% over the 4070 Ti, so about half the advantage is wiped out. If we were to take a hypothetical AAA game with advanced lighting, when using pure rasterized lighting techniques, the 9070 XT might win out by 76 to 60 FPS, say, but when employing RT lighting, it might only beat the 4070 Ti by perhaps 41 to 37 FPS. But what if just for fun we equalized the raster performance between the 9070 XT and a hypothetical Ada Lovelace or Blackwell GPU? The, those two architectures are pretty similar when it comes to ray tracing. The NVIDIA GPU would win out in that scenario by perhaps 47 to 41. Like I said, just a bit of fun. Anyway, it's time to summarize briefly. Based on benchmarks for previous RDNA generations, RDNA 4 is a significant step forward in RT performance. It's fair to say that it now makes most RT gaming viable when you consider it outperforms a 4070 Ti by a significant margin. However, with path tracing, the story is different and I do have some concerns about frame pacing when turning on ray tracing that I hope will be addressed by future driver updates. If path traced lighting is important to you and you are unsure whether AMD will come up with a ray reconstruction alternative anytime soon, you might want to consider an NVIDIA GPU. If you can get your hands on one for a reasonable price, and that is a very big if right now. But for everyone else, and probably the great majority, I definitely would consider the 9070 XT to be a very capable ray tracing card. That's going to do it for this video. If you found it useful, do consider subscribing if you haven't already, and like and comment to boost the video's profile and get a conversation going down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.